Today is a super exciting day because I am out here with Cirrus Suspension to do some testing on their new offering of front fork. That is the Compact Motocross or CMX front fork. This is their F43 chassis that you guys have seen on the Suron Ultra B and midsize bikes. That fork has gone through a ton of development, but it is now shortened and specifically tuned for the small sized bikes or the compact class of electric dirt bike, which means that the front fork travel is 220 millimeters. They have also introduced toolless compression adjusters up here on the top of the fork. That is incredible for just making quick changes while you're out there on the trail for your compression adjustment. Something they also did to make this fork work on all sorts of different bikes is make different brake caliper mounts. Those mounts also include the different spacers to fit the proper wheel for the bike that you spec. So in this case we're out here testing the Ventus 1 Plus today but they have gone through and tested all sorts of these small bikes and made sure that the fitment is perfect for those machines which means when you pull this fork out of the box to mount it up to your bike that it is ready to go with whatever you select. So if you have a Celeria MX-5, it's gonna come with the right brake mount, the right spacers, everything you need to just bolt that straight onto your bike. So with that adaptability comes the capability of passing this fork along from bike to bike. So as we all know, this market moves very rapidly. It seems like every month the next best bike comes out. That is why Cirrus designed this fork the way that it is, to be able to adapt it to anything. So they can move quickly in getting this set up on any bike that comes into the market and make sure that it works properly. Now, they do also take the time to tune things, but they made the damper in this fork so broad for so many different terrain styles that it really just comes down to a couple of different clicker adjustments to get it feeling right, which is why we're out here today. We are going to be testing this on the Ventus One Plus, making sure that the spring rate is correct and finding a good baseline tune for the damper and a lot of that comes down to balance so not only will we be focused on the front fork we'll also be focused on making sure that the rear shock is in a good place and Cirrus is creating an incredible matrix that is going to show you guys a lot of different valuable things for getting this set up on your particular bike. I would say you can truly expect this fork to outlast any bike that you put it onto. Obviously you need to properly maintain it, but that usually just comes down to replacing the oil every some odd 50 hours. Other than that, this fork is built to last. It is truly the best of the best. This is a high performing competition motocross fork scaled down to properly fit these bikes. And that comes with the value of precision, great parts, and fine machining to go into creating something that is truly going to last you and really make the difference for where your money goes. So like I previously mentioned, today I'm gonna to be testing it on the Ventus One Plus. I also have the E-Ride Pro 3.0 here with me today. I've been doing a lot of testing on the E-Ride Pro SR and the Zero XB. All of these different bikes have dramatically different weight and power characteristics which is why Cirrus is so intent on tuning every single bike that they are offering this fork for, which is super exciting. Not very many companies, if any, in our industry are actually doing that right now, aside from some of the companies like EBMX and other power manufacturers that specifically have to make tunes for specific bikes. Suspension-wise, this is the only company that has been doing this exact thing and spending countless hours testing their suspension on bikes. So let's dive into testing both the Ventus One Plus and the E-Ride Pro 3.0 today. Look forward to it because every single time I have thrown my leg over a bike with this suspension, it is one of the best days out there. 
So super excited to get after it. So we're most of the way through testing today and honestly got to a really incredible place with the Ventus One Plus, which is super exciting. We got the right spring rake, got, got the bike feeling really plush, really compliant to the terrain and ultimately dialed in. And all that we really had to do on the rear end was just change the spring rate. So we changed the spring rate on the Ventus One Plus from a 450 to a 500, keeping that stock shock on there. And then obviously just some clicker adjustments to match riding style. So. That bike turned out incredible. The E-Ride Pro 3.0, we kind of went from the E-Ride Pro SR spec, which given the E-Ride Pro is quite a bit heavier, um, and basically just saw you know how, how that spec works on here with some clicker adjustments, and ultimately came to quite the good spot with that. Um, but because this bike is lighter, and because I'm so happy with the Ventus One Plus, which is ultimately a much similar much more similar weight to the 3.0 we're actually going to take that same spring rate guide and pull it over to this bike to test that as well so just one more step in testing and um, ultimately yeah we're looking forward to getting this e-rad pro 3.0 even more dialed in honestly i would be pretty happy on it with the uh, stiffer springs that are in it currently if i'm in a more aggressive setting like riding on a track because the bike maintains a really playful characteristic but also provides good traction and all that but now we're going to take it to kind of i think a more overall compliant plush setup and just see how it reacts to that so, so yeah we've got these guys switching over the forks to match up the spring rates from the ventus one plus and see how it goes we got done testing both the Ventus One Plus and the E-Ride Pro 3.0, getting these bikes to a baseline setting that worked well across both trail and moto. But let's talk about the E-Ride Pro SR. Now this is a bike that is really good out of the package, but there's one thing that I've always wanted to improve, and that would be the suspension. So let's take things back to the very beginning of 2025 when E-Rad Pro announced their lineup of new E-Motos. On paper, these bikes were built to dominate the rest. The only competition standing in their way was the Ventus One Plus coming out at 28 kilowatts, but E-Rad Pro came with a lot of improvements in terms of the powertrain to really make their bikes stand apart from the rest. E-Rad Pro stiffened up their frame added a 428 drivetrain and thickened their axles to try to make up for the additional power that they threw into this small size bike chassis. But I think the biggest downfall of this bike overall is the suspension, which is kind of to be expected out of a bike from the factory. None of these E-Motos have great suspension from the factory. And a big reason for that obviously comes down to cost effectiveness. A lot of these e-moto manufacturers are trying to put bikes into the world at a price that's affordable for everybody to get into. But when you start getting into these big power numbers, you truly need something that can back that up and make it to where these bikes really are rideable and no longer dangerous. Just look at the difference it made for Brian, a 200 pound rider on the E-Rad Pro SR. Jump into the corner, yeah! <laughs> Jump into the corner, yeah! It's such a drastic difference, especially on this bike. Can't believe how much it transformed this E-Ride SR. Brian might not admit it, but the first time he rode the E-Ride Pro SR, he was not very happy with the bike. 
He thought it was overall way too soft, especially with the power output that the machine had. So doing suspension made all the difference for him to be able to ride it on the trails. And I know that we've talked a lot about the high powered and heavier bikes in the lightweight e-moto class, but let's talk about the light ones. This is the Zero XB, which is essentially just a Suron Light B in a much more modernized form. Zero came to the market with this bike and it weighs right around 130 pounds. And you're thinking a fork of this weight probably doesn't belong on a bike that is this light. But let's give it to Nate and see what he thinks. Zero XB, small bike, 1619 wheels, typical cockpit upgrades with the Cirrus CMX fork. A fork that I was a little bit critical of saying that might be too much fork for a little bike. Makes sense on the SR, makes sense on the Ventus One. 25 kilowatt plus bikes that just need more suspension to handle the speed. But man, was I wrong. This thing is a ton of fun with this fork on it. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel like it's overpowering the bike. It tracks extremely well. We've got it set up for this bike, meaning like the out of the box tune. And it is just an absolute blast. It makes this bike so fun. It's crazy. And this is even on the OEM rear shock. Like they tuned it to perfection. It goes through these rock gardens so smooth. The Cirrus CMX fork compact motocross is not just for the big bikes. Crazy stable. It's funny, it's uh, stiff like the chassis is stiff because it's so strong, but the fork itself is just so plush. Rear tire is getting so much traction that the front end keeps coming up. Oh my gosh, the uh, power is severely underrated. That, that rear tire is just getting so much traction that the front end just keeps lifting out of every turn. I do, I do not remember that from any stock light bee that I've ever ridden. And I'm only in standard mode. I'm not even in sport. I'm like in the middle mode. Now, one of the things that I appreciate about how Cirrus is doing this whole program is they are literally tuning it for each bike model. You know, and like this one, they tuned it for the OEM Real Shock. And it actually works extremely well. Um, on other bikes, they tuned it for an EXT Arma on the rear. And of course, that feels magical. This bike, for some reason, just like the Light B, just came out super balanced. Like, it just uh, works extremely well with this fork on it. I thought this combination would not work. I was more vocal than anyone that I thought this might not be the best idea. Take the biggest fork, put it on the smallest bike. I was dead wrong. It is so cool to see how much fun Nate had on the Zero XB. That is a really lightweight bike, perfectly compares to a Suron Light B in terms of spec and weight. So it's cool to see it work on that and the heavier, more powerful bikes. But do you guys remember when we built this bike back in 2022? <laughs> This machine, at its time and in its prime, was one of the biggest, baddest Suron Light Bees you could possibly build. It took a lot to build this. In fact, it cost us basically an arm and a leg. It was dumb expensive. Just one of those kind of dream build style bikes. Which is why it's crazy that nowadays you can have a bike like this, the E-Ride Pro SR, for pretty much half the cost of what that one cost us to build. And I know you guys are thinking this Cirrus F43 fork is extremely expensive. Why would I buy it? The value that you get out of a fork like that is huge because it's going to last so much longer than any other fork on the market. That's why it's awesome to see that in today's standard and world, we have bikes like this that have the same, if not better performance characteristics 
out of the package than what gold member did when we first got it and now we've got suspension to match that and truth be told this bike with only having suspension done to it will outperform this bike any day of the week that's why I'm stoked Cirrus has come to the market with their F43 fork because it is something the market truly needs. That level of professionalism is insane to see out of a brand and I'm stoked that we've got it in today's market. Thank you to Cirrus. Let me know what you guys think about this fork. Look forward to your comments and thank you so much for watching.